Uh, but next up is Omid Sani from U U USC. Um, he'll be talking about preferential subspace identification for modeling behaviorally relevant neural dynamics. Go for it. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. So thank you for the introduction. I'm Omid Sani, a postdoc at the Shanachi Lab at USC. I'm going to talk about this method, PSID, uh, for modeling behavior relevant neural dynamics. So uh, to give some background, we you know, a lot of studies have some recordings from the brain, and we also have some behavior that is tracked. And we're interested in studying the relation between the two. And one of the traditional approaches is based on the idea of tuning, where you have, when you observe the finite of some neuron, uh, goes up and down based on the behavior, like faster behavior with a higher finite. And this leads to a model like this, where you have neural activity as a function of behavior at each point in time. Uh, and further, you can also model the dynamics of behavior, uh, which can help with reduction of noise. Uh, and it's ba largely uh, based on physics, like the relation of velocity and position. And you can also model the residuals of these uh, relations. And together you have, once you learn the parameters using least squares regression, for example, uh, you have what is typically called a representation model. Now the issue is uh, there is potentially a lot other going, a lot else, a lot beyond the behavior going on in the brain. So you might have the same neural activity, the different neural activity for the same behavior and the other way around. Uh, so another approach that's quite popular is to model the neural activity as a function of now a time series of latent states. Uh, now these latent states drive the neural activity and they have their own dynamics that you can model with a difference equation. And they also drive the behavior. Uh, this is more flexible than before because these states are latent. And once you learn their dynamics, uh, the residual statistics and all the model parameters, this is what you could call uh, neural dynamical modeling or NDM. So notice that both cases you are using a linear statistics model to describe the neural activity. And the difference is really in the objective that was used to fit the model that leads to them describing potentially different parts of the neural activity. So to see that, let's consider that our brain has produced the recorded neural activity and behavior. Uh, and you can imagine the state of the brain at each point in time to be a high dimensional variable uh, where some of its dimensions have con contributed to driving the recorded neural activity, some have contributed to driving behavior, and some have contributed to both. Uh, and you might be interested in finding this shared dynamic, the behavior relevant states of the brain. Uh, but let's first see what those uh, standard methods that we just described do. Uh, so in neural dynamical modeling, the dynamics of the model are learned purely using neural activity. So it may learn dynamics that are unrelated to the behavior of interest. And in representational modeling, the dynamics are learned purely based on behavior. So you may learn behavior dynamics that are not encoded in the recorded neural activity. So we need a new method that we've uh, developed here, PSID. Uh, you can check out the details in the preprint. But the general formulation is a linear state space model where you have both neural activity and behavior in terms of the latent state. And importantly, the way the model learns the parameters of the model, uh, the way PSID learns the parameters, uh, it dissociates the states into two parts, the behavior relevant dimensions and the other dimensions. And critically, you can only learn the behavior relevant ones, which has several benefits that to touch on here. Uh, so the fitting is very efficient and involves uh, just a few linear algebra operations, SVD and so on. You can check out the preprint. So it's efficient in uh, fitting. It doesn't involve uh, like unpredictable, computationally expensive uh, optimization, for example. It has a predictable cost of, uh, of computation. Uh, so first, as general validation, uh, when we apply this to, to a lot of random models, with random parameters, we can show that as more training data is provided, all model parameters are learned uh, correctly with the error of, uh, converging towards zero. Uh, and we can also show with simulations that it correctly prioritizes learning of behavior relevant dynamics. How can we do that? So here we've simulated 
random models that have 16 latent states, but only four of them drive behavior. Uh, and we want to see if we identify a model with only four latent state dimensions, what would the uh, method learn? Would it be the four behavior relevant ones or any of the other ones? Uh, so to evaluate that, we can look at the eigenvalues of the block of the A matrix that is related to behavior relevant states and see how well we can learn them. And here I'm showing the result average over the models, the random models. Uh, you can see that PSID in green as the horizontal axis is the latent state dimensions. As we increase the latent state dimensions, as soon as we get to four, which is the minimal number required to describe these four behavior relevant uh, latent states, the error of describing them goes to zero. Whereas if you use neurodynamical modeling, for example, even with 16 dimensions of latent states, you still have more error than with PSID. So PSID is correctly prioritizing behavior relevant dynamics. Now, uh, this has also implications in terms of the number of training samples that you need. So now I'm showing the same error as a function of the number of training samples that you use. And you can see that PSID, the green, is uh, going to very small errors, uh, while neurodynamical modeling with a much higher latency dimension of 16 requires orders of magnitude larger training samples to get to similar errors to PSID. And if you have lower dimensional states, uh, it, it wouldn't get there even with more training samples. So PSID, we can confirm simulations, correctly learn all model parameters, uh, learns them with lower dimensional latency states and fewer training samples. Now let's see what we can see in uh, the real data. Now here we are analyzing, uh, analyzing data collected by our collaborator, uh, Bijan Science Lab, uh, where monkeys are performing reaches to diverse 3D locations with their hand, holding a target, letting go, and returning to the resting position. And we are tracking the angle of all joints in their fingers, arms, uh, elbow, and so on, so all degrees of freedom. Uh, and now in the real data, we don't know what the true eigenvalues are to evaluate whether we've learned behavior and dynamics correct or not, but we can decode behavior. And that's our measure of how well we've learned behavior relevant dynamics. And just to give you an idea, the decoder consists of uh, just the neural activity goes into a Kalman filter, and then that gives you the latent states that describe the neural activity, uh, and then a linear combination of those latent states gives the behavior. So this decoder structure is the same in all methods, but they've learned different parameters for, uh, for this decoder. So here I'm showing as a function of the latent state dimension, what the cross validated decoding accuracy was for all across all joints. Uh, and you can see that PSID, the green, uh, converges to its peak decoding performance with very few latent state dimensions whereas the other methods require more latency dimensions to reach to their peak performance, which is lower than PSID. So now to uh, go deeper into this a little bit. So across all data sets, this is the distribution of the dimension at which each method reach, reaches its peak performance. So for PSID four, much higher for the other methods. And at that dimension of four, PSID is significantly more predictive of behavior than neurodynamical modeling. And even with a much higher dimension, the other methods are still are significantly less predictive than the low dimensional model that PSID finds. So PSID is finding a low dimensional representation of behavioral relevant dynamics in this real data. Uh, and it may, may help uh, character, characterize or quantify the dimensionality of behavioral relevant dynamics here. Uh, so next we repeated this for every recording channel and every uh, joint separately. Similar results for almost every recording channel and joint PSID learns significantly accurate, more accurate models of behavior relevant dynamics. And next we asked whether this low dimension that PSID finds is low because behavior or neural activity are as low dimensional. Uh, but we found that uh, when we model neural activity on its own as a linear state is one of the different latency dimensions or behavior on its own as a as similar again, say this is one of the different latency dimensions, the dimensions that you need to reach the peak prediction of each signal using its own path is significantly higher than the dimension that PSID reveals for the joint dynamics. So there are predictable dynamics in both signals, much higher dimensional, but the shared dynamics is low dimensional and PSID allows us to uncover that. Uh, and then another interesting thing in this data that we found 
is now that we have a tool to do dimension reduction while preserving behavior relevant dynamics, we wanted to visualize what's happening in the, uh, in the population activity during the task. So uh, we, uh, we fitted models with two-dimensional latent states, both with NDM and PSID, and then plotted these two dimensions during reach and return. Uh, so we found that interestingly, uh, there is rotational dynamics both during reach and return in our task, which is kind of a complex tax. Uh, it's interesting that here in such a uh, complex tax, we still find rotational dynamics. But then more interesting than that, when we apply PSID, we find rotational dynamics that reverse direction between reach and return periods. Uh, so note that only neural activity has gone into the models that extract these latent states. So it doesn't know that that the R movement is roughly reversed in direction during reach and return, but it happens that the latent states that PSID extract are intuitively more congruent with the uh, reversal of the, uh, the hand direction in the task. But quantitatively, they also lead to significantly more accurate prediction. Uh, so this shows that both kinds of dynamics exist in the neural activity, but PSID allowed us to extract the ones that are more behavior relevant uh, that might have otherwise have been missed. Uh, and with that, I would thank the lab uh, and all of the funding sources. And here is the link to our preprint. Uh, and the Python and MATLAB code for PSID will be online soon. So this is a general method you can apply to any two signals, like two different uh, neural activity from two different regions of the brain to find the shared dynamics or neural activity, or even two different signals that are not neural activity. Basically, the math, the simulations, don't care about the signals. So I'm excited to see what people might be able to find using the method. With that, I'm happy to take any questions. Excellent. Thank you for that great talk, Omid. We do have a couple questions um, already. So Cole Hurwitz wonders, have you tried using PSID on one behavior? and then seeing how well the learned dynamics explain another behavior. We followed oh, that, up with a, some held out behavior you would think shares the same neural dynamics as the other first behavior. That's a very good question. We've actually done this, uh, hopefully in the paper that comes out, uh, you would see, uh, we tried leaving out different dimensions of behavior from our training data, like train on a different random subset of joints and then try to predict the other one. And indeed, even in that case, when PSID hasn't seen the behavior, because all those joints are involved in the same task, there are correlations between them, the, the model that PSID learns was more predictive of unseen joints than the other methods. It's a very illuminating answer. Um, and we have a second question from Matthias Hennig, um, wondering whether you checked the variance associated with the relevant dimensions and compared them with others. Uh, variance, so, so okay, uh, you mean the variance in neural activity that was behavior relevant versus the rest. So we have also done that. Uh, we've sweeped the latent state dimensions and then looked at how much variance in neural activity they predict versus how much variance in the behavior they predict. And with PSID, you can explain the behavior, the behavior variance very quickly and there is a lot of neural variance that is not still required to explain the behavior dynamics. And uh, PSID has this option, a second stage that continues to also learn those neural dynamics. And you can see, uh, I wish I had the plot here. You can see that, uh, yeah, there is, there is a lot of behavior irrelevant variance in neural activity. Uh, the question is which ones you learn first and PSID ten, uh, tends to learn the behavior relevant variance in neural activity first. I think you did a great job illustrating it with your hands. Oh, you could see it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and there's a follow-up comment, and then I think we'll have to switch over. Uh, Matthias, Matthias says, at least in the mouse M1, the neural variance associated with the task could be very small. Oh, I is, think that's just a, that's a follow-up comment in the chat. Did you check the variance associated with the relevant dimensions? Oh, uh, I think Matthias was, ju yeah, just making that comment that in mouse M1, uh, it might be expected that the variance associated with task could be very small. 
Yeah, and that's one of the motivations of PSID, because if you blindly try to model all of neural activity, you you're likely to focus on just the most variant parts of it that are likely not related to behavior. So uh, the motivation is to try to not miss those potentially small variances in neural activity that are behavior relevant. Great points. All right, thank you, Amit. I think we're gonna have to switch gears to Joel.